Also have enough air to it is intellectually engaging and you can only become a leader when there are problems <laughs> <laughs> i like that the same applies to, to to rwanda burundi so what are we federating whether rats from another country can be i mean someone must be somebody must be there to hold everybody accountable but at the moment we would rather deal with what we have make it right First of all, we as elites of Uganda, have, we have made seven the issue. I can tell him seven is not the problem of Uganda. The problems of Uganda are much deeper. We can change the next 20 presidents and we'll still be on this roundabout. Deeply incisive. The different political forces that, that we have in the country, in the, in the country we, we don't seem to really have achieved that you know, minimum political consensus over certain things. Authentically symbolic and insightful. Behind the headlines, every Wednesday at 10 p.m. with Charles Sodong To. All on your public broadcaster, UBC, inspiring Uganda. A very good evening and uh, warm welcome to this edition of Behind the Headlines. My name is Charles Odongso, and uh, today. Uh, this Wednesday, the 22nd of June 2022, we are going to be looking at issues education. We are going to be looking specifically at the industrial actions by teachers. And the question is, how can the dilemma that is facing the country right now be addressed? Starting, by, uh, starting with government, the Ministry of Education, the other stakeholders, the teachers who have downed their tools right now, and uh, students are suffering, they are not being taught. And so we are going to be looking at all those, uh, you know, different issues within the education sector concerning teachers' welfare. And to discuss this, we have, let me start from the um, extreme left, we have Dr. Mujimba Dennis, he's the spokesperson for the Ministry of Education and Sports. Doctor, you're most welcome to this maiden appearance of yours on this show. Thank you, Charles, for inviting us, and good evening, viewers. Good to see you. Um, next to Dr. M uh, Mugim Mujimba is uh, Mr. Philbert Baguma, General Secretary of uh, the Uganda National Teachers Union, UNATU. The guys who are giving, you know, hard time to, uh, to those in government charged with, you know, finding solutions to this big issue. Phil, but you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you very much and uh, good evening, viewers. Um, uh, you know, someone said that Phil, but actually when, when he's talking, when you see him talking, yes. he, he cuts the pose of or the poise of a very humble man, but he's a hard, hard guy. Teacher. Teachers are like that usually. He's an extremist. <laughs> he's an extremist. I don't no. find him an extremist. No, 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 no. He's a hard bagainer, maybe. No. You know? He's a hard bagainer. <laughs> he's doing his work. Good. I feel that it's good to get, to get you back on this show again. Thank you. And uh, good evening. <laughs> Um, next to <laughs> Phil, but we have Reverend Dr. Grace Lubali. He's, the, he's an education consultant. He teaches at Chambugo University. And, uh, you know, a man of his, uh, his moment, really, you can describe him. Um, Reverend, you're most welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles, for inviting me. Thank you. Mm. And uh, next to me here, we have the Honorable Ojara Mapenduzi, Member of Parliament for Bardege Laibi, Gulu City. And uh, I want to welcome you back. You have been in West Nile and just driven straight from West Nile That's right. to the show. Welcome back and uh, we thank God that you had a good drive. You, you forgot to <coughs> introduce me as a teacher. <laughs> Are you? Uh, my well, yes, we, my we will talk about yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it means I'm surrounded. We <laughs> are. Uh, uh, no, um, but I am on the extreme. I can just escape through here. <laughs> so you, you, you remain alone. <laughs> and you will follow. You will you 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 follow you. <laughs> <laughs> But don't worry, lawyers are usually lawyers are counselors, so you are in you are you are around them as well. They will need you. The teachers cannot deal without lawyers, especially in these hard times of bargains and uh, threats and all that. Um, so they need you as a lawyer. Sarah um, uh, Birete is the executive director at the Center for Constitutional Governance an NGO, and uh, Sarah, you're most welcome back to the show. Thank you, Chad, and good evening, viewers. Good. Um, gentlemen and uh, lady, um, I, 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 let, me, let, me start from, let me start from the last that is now trending. Um, there is a, I just got uh, today a letter, a tough talking letter from the um, PS, uh, Ministry of Public Service, the employer of all public servants in Uganda, uh, Madam Catherine B. Bitara Kwate Musingwire. And uh, she, has, she has written a very hard letter and uh, warning teachers to go back to school. And if they don't, she even says, sh let me read just one or two paragraphs to, you know, to set us into this discussion. Um, the second last paragraph says, government has not issued any directive for closure of any school and therefore any contrary instructions to learners are regarded as illegal. All schools are expected to proceed with the Ministry of Education and Sports School calendar for the second term 2022. Then she ends by saying, by copy of this letter, the chief administrative officers and town clerks are called upon to take stock of the teachers present of the teachers present and submit absent teachers by the 30th June 2022 for eventual removal from the payroll in other words madam catherine is saying um <clears throat> if mr filbert that if you continue with your you with your industrial action with staying away from teaching that all the teachers working with you have to be sent off and struck off the payroll. This is the latest that we have seen um, following a meeting you had with the president and also Catherine was part of it, I know that, and uh, other, other, other person, persons including the, the, the Minister of Education, First Lady, and all of them were there. But from this last one that is coming from Madame Catherine, what do you make of it? Starting with you, Phil, but. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, from the letter which we have received, which we are reading from there, it is so disheartening that a person of Catherine could write that letter. Because she was part of the negotiations she attended all meetings and finally she signed the collective bargaining agreement. She has alluded that our industrial action is illegal, but we are going to answer back in the morning and show her that she has not read the laws. We have followed the law to dot and we are still on course. And those utterances are not going to deter us from our cause of action. We have put it very clear to government that this discrimination in terms of salary payment to the teachers is detrimental to the learners. And unfortunately, because you cannot wake up one day and increase salaries by over 300 percent, leaving the counterparts with zero. And you claim that the government does not have money. You have a teacher <coughs> who earns four million going to class to teach for 40 minutes on 
worked his way out, another teacher with the same qualifications is entering, earning 800,000. And they are teaching the same class, using the same minutes, and they sit in the same staff room. And then you expect the two teachers to deliver religiously and make sure these learners pass the exams at the end of the day. We have put this clear and um, when she says it is illegal, you look at the documentation. We have a collective bargaining agreement that was signed on 22nd June 2018 covering the financial years of 2018-2019 and expiring in 2022-2023. That was the last agreement you had with, yes. the, with the government? And uh, it is duly signed by both public service unions and the government. Mr. Mujimba, Dr. Sorry. Is, is government being misled by some of government officials? Why, why this shift of positions? If you have agreed in 2018 and you have not fulfilled four years later, why don't you say, sorry, we had COVID, for example, interrupted us, the economy is doing badly, but this is what we can do instead of saying, please go back to school, forcing you to go back to school and saying, you teach, start teaching. Why is that the case happening now? Uh, thank you, Charles. When uh, we are seated in this room, beautiful room, if a mosquito begins buzzing around, you'll hardly see us shifting around. But if you see this entire panel, scattering out of this room you need to ask yourself why is the reaction of the panelists this extreme so when you see government taking an extreme position which is not usual you need to ask yourself what is behind the scenes <laughs> what is behind the headline what is behind that letter as you rightly said in setting the stage there were prior engagements and the topmost one involved His Excellency the President, accompanied by cabinet ministers and other technocrats meeting with UNATO. He clearly set out the context of the country, where we are, so that UNATO could appreciate the justification and rationale of a focus on science, scientists and science teachers. And the rationale is that where we are in our stage of national development and socioeconomic transformation, we need to develop, consolidate the science base. Now, that is very critical. And why do we need that? Because if you are going to attract investors, the private sector, to spur our development, because it's a, a private sector driven, economy. If you want to attract them, you have to have the skilled human resource to work in these industries, to work in these uh, facilities they are setting up. Now, for you to be able to attract and retain them, you have to compensate them well. And he gave you now to a very, very elaborate context and examples. You probably had his, uh, you know, classic example of how we had to invest in the petroleum engineers, the scientists we currently have. Moving on from there, he actually put also in context that government does not demean or minimize the contribution of humanities. In fact, he gave an example of the 60s when lawyers <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dr. Virete's fraternity were on demand because at that time we needed craft legislation, policies, etc. 
Therefore, you needed such cadres in the public service. Were they given uh, such enhancements that created discrimination? <coughs> now, actually, he's, uh, he's a witness here. He actually gave examples. There was still differences in pay of the cadres. I don't know whether at that time they were called enhancements, but actually there was a difference. So he set that context very well. Now, where are we now? If we move fast forward to 2018, when we began negotiations with uh, UNATO, they first talked with us as Minister of Education because the employees under UNATO are our people as Minister of Education and Sports. Now, what uh, Mr. Philbert needs to tell our listeners is that there is a condition in there that all this is dependent on availability of resources. And for the sake of our listeners, that CBA, by the way, is not duly signed, as uh, UNATO perhaps would perceive it to be. Because for government to be committed to invest those billions, there were billions of shillings, the Attorney General has to append his or her signature, the Attorney General's office. Is that such? So? Yes, such a document has to be cleared by cabinet and the funds have to be appropriated by parliament. Now, all those stages are not part of it. Again, I, I'm not a legal mind, so I don't want to go no. into the legal gymnastics. No, but, 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 but you're a public official, of yes. official. Yes. Are you saying yes. that the president sits with these teachers uh -huh. together with the Honorable Janet in charge of education? Yes. All of you from education, from public sector, mm. from public service mm. ministry. Yes. And you come up with an agreement <coughs> and you draft a resolution and you want, you even announce it to the public that we have agreed and you want us to believe because the Attorney General did not sign, you are saying that it was just one of those passing documents not to be taken seriously. Are you saying that? No, I am not saying that. What are you exactly I'm saying? I'm simply stating the fact that when we look at that agreement, it is not duly signed. It is not complete. Because one of the things that uh, happens, Minister of Finance has to commit that they will identify the funds. But the president is the minister of finance, in, in fact. Yes. The president he is the actually minister. delegates whatever powers now, over, Charles, over financial Charles. matters to Kasaija. It is delegated. Yes, Maybe let Charles, him tell us, Charles, yeah. let but, him uh, tell us you, who leads the a, government. If you have side. A, a copy of that CBA, the mm -hmm. president did not append his signature. He delegates all his responsibilities to the cabinet ministers. Now, they are also his advisors. They cannot commit government fully to something that they are not able to finance. So I just want to put into context what uh, Mr. Baguma said, the word duly. It is not complete. Now, that term availability of funds is what actually brings it us to the state that we are in. The other point that brings us to where we are, that we feel UNATO has not appreciated, is that government, with or without UNATO, is committed to enhancing salaries of all the public servants. The tag here is in a phased manner. Now, UNATO wants fulfillment of 2018 CBA right here, right now. The president clearly communicated in his engagement with us and UNATO. He actually concluded by saying, go continue talking with public service, finance, and education. Number two, the issue that you not brought out of disparity. He actually recognized it and even said, by the way, I think what, what we would want is if a scientist is at 4 million, let the arts teacher be at 3 or 3.5 million. So going forward, you will see that disparity being closed. The issue is it may not be closed next financial year, depending on uh, Honorable <laughs> Mapendus if he finds us the money or not. But when we are closing, we shall close that disparity. Now, there is also a difference in approach. You not to seize focus on scientists and science teachers as discrimination. But as a ministry which is implementing government policy, we are seeing it as prioritization. 
We are simply prioritizing scientists and science teachers. Charles, we've had hemorrhage before of losing science teachers and scientists. How do we lose them? They migrate to places that are paying well. Now, getting them back is not easy. Right about three weeks to a month ago, you could have heard the private universities themselves already, they are crying foul against government and they are saying intervene because we are losing our scientists to government. Reason? Because of pay. Now, that is, that is uh, uh, um, an intended consequence of a good policy position. So I am bringing all this to help us appreciate that the differences we have with UNATO are in approach, but also UNATO's failure to ap appreciate the context in which we are, that we do not have the funds. And the, I think the other critical one, which I think I should say before I hand over the mic back to you, Charles, UNATO's position, and they reiterated it on, on Saturday the 18th. They said, repeat what you did in 2019, I think, Philbert will correct me. Repeat what you did in 2019 when the little funds available were distributed amongst all the teachers. Now, UNATO preferred that, but it was a strategic mistake. That is when the science teachers in the education and sports sector lagged behind the president's policy direction of enhancing scientists and science teachers. Right now, Honorable Mapenduzi has appro appropriated to us 95 billion for enhancement of salaries for teachers. But UNATO would prefer that that 95 billion, we scatter it amongst 169,000 teachers. If you divide 95 billion shillings by 169,000 teachers, Charles, each one of us here, assuming we are teachers, would get 46,800 shillings per month as salary increment. Is that what you want our teachers to get or not? Okay. Thank you. Um, Rev Reverend, um, the, the, let me start with you on the disparity. Um, the disparity in payment. Is, mm -hmm. Do you consider it discriminatory or is it a good uh, plan of... Uh, of uh, starting with handling the, the science teachers. It's one, of the, it's one of the major issues leading to where we are now. Thank you, Charles. Um, let me just give one sentence. For me, I'm one of the person who agrees with the president that the question of promoting sciences is important. I can even give you statistics. In Chambogo University, in the, the graduation of last year, 2021, the science were 26%. The arts were 74 percent. Go to your neighbor, the people who do science and the arts. That's the same. Uh, go to across the world. Let me take you to Singapore. By 1990, the people doing sciences were 66 percent, and those of arts were 34 percent. That is Singapore, Singapore. 1990. Mm. Just get a graduation, get a school, get where, mm. and there is every evidence that science contributed to the development of Singapore. There is evidence. evidence. Mm. And there is no doubt that sciences promote development. I mean, all promote, but there is a specific contribution science can do to that. And so, for me, I must be on record that I agree with the president in his view of, prom of promoting sciences. Yeah. It is called ideology. Mm -hmm. I differ in strategy. Mm. The strategy the president has taken has not been, is not correct. You cannot begin a strategy of discrimination. I give you an example of a small district, Kamuli district. Mm -hmm. I want to give you schools. There is a district education office of Kamuli. There is a headmaster, head teacher of Kamuli, let's say, Soga High School. Mm -hmm. You have a head teacher of Kamuli Girls Primary School. Mm -hmm. Now, in a primary school, now, science is not beginning in senior one. Science is beginning in P1. You could even say nursery, but since there are no government nursery schools, so you use P1. So science is beginning in P1. You go to senior, senior. You go to university. Now, how do you use one group of people? Now, imagine in, in, in P1, a teacher teaching P7 math is earning 400. A teacher teaching senior one, the next school is earning 4 million. The headmaster of the school is earning 2 million. The district education officer is earning 2 million. You are creating a management crisis. 
once a school can, because a teacher of science is not going to go to the lab alone without headmaster's supervision. And the, first, the principal, that's why even in management, we, the SRA structures, how can a teacher teaching senior on physics and a SRA more than a district education office? Which management are you going to play? So it defeats the logic of the president, it defeats the interest, and it will not work. Number two, teachers are not, I don't use another profession, let me say there. Teaching, I have taught, I have taught for 21 years in the University of Chambuk. I have taught teachers and I've done other work. Now, to wake up and force people to go and teach, people can go and waste their time around. I mean, teaching, in education, uh, Charles, education is only evident to have taken place when we see observable behaviors. Now, so when I'm teaching students, the vice chancellor, or I have taught, you don't have to be there to supervise me. It is me to prepare, to go, and teach. Now, you have killed my brain, you have caused motivation, you don't see the results. Secondly, let's use senior four, or level. Can someone pass math, physics, biology, agriculture? Chemistry, and then you fail English, and then will you get? A, will you be graded in UNEB? No. Secondly, is there a language they call a chemistry mm -hmm. that you study chemistry? As in, you study chemistry, answer in chemistry, answer. In, is there a language called chemistry? So where do you say that the teacher of English language has no value? The teacher of chemistry only we want. Which in the same school, in the same staff room, that strategy cannot work. So for me. The actually, ideology. Actually, even sign language has to be either in English or in another language. Very exactly, yeah, in sign <laughs> languages. So, Charles, the ideology of the president, we are together. The strategy, we have defined. And the, so, my point then is that the strategy must be changed. And my view, I want to give three points. One, the president to promote science, he can do the following things. So, one, le, no, one, let me, start, let me start by infrastructure. Can we have every school four labs? A lab of biology, a lab of agriculture, a lab of physics, a lab of chemistry. Whether government or private school. With, with equipment. Um, um, that's what I'm saying. Starting with the, the buildings. They might put a building. Let the government build four labs in every school, whether government or private. Because whether people are in a private school or in a government school, we want science, we want chemistry. Yes. The, 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 the trans doesn't say chemistry from a private university, chemistry, it is chemistry. So can he build the labs as a starting point? Number two, equip the labs. Number three, but they are treated uh, since the, the education science. officer is here, the, 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 sp the spokesperson, Please, but economics is not there should be no discrimination of salaries. That is an constitution. So if you have been, if you have got a degree, like now in Chambogo, I train teachers in one room like this. Well, those are doing chemistry and biology, English and literature. I teach them as one group as teachers. I teach them professional ethics, professional studies to go and become teachers. The difference is that for you, you'll be a teacher of chemistry and biology, in the of history and geography, we teach the, the same. So when they get out, they get a degree of education and they employed as government teachers in such scale U4, as graduate teachers. The pay must be the same. So for the present, the strategy of increasing science, he can, he can put incentives like building a house, for example, since we can say like this, a teacher teaching agriculture, we say may, it, it may have some time to do practical, maybe to observe how, how the plant is in, in, is, was in the night, to observe the plant in the morning, to observe the plant at lunch time, to observe the plant in the evening, to, in the evening. So we can say, science teachers may have accommodation as a, just an incentive. We can give a special, a small allowance by school for a practical. For example, if you are conducting a practical of English language, teaching people speech and the practical of physics light there could be some difference so we can give allowance it has nothing with the salary at all there can be just allowances and then we can have sciences so i want to to select this the ideology of the president i am with him together the strategy no 
you can't do discrimination, you are creating management crisis, it defeats the logic to not, in, to not receive the purpose, and th for that reason, it will, it will, will lose sense entirely and objective. In my view, they have given what they think they can do. They simply need to pay the same salary, the same structure, <coughs> but just have incentives for the teachers if they can. But majorly, if I can tell you, why don't we have sciences in Uganda? The major problem have not first been the teachers. It has been equipment. Mm. Equipment, you go to, you, I was supervising certain, when I, at a time we were doing some work with your neighbor. Mm. You go in an apartment, for example, they were doing physics when they have never seen light. Go to um, that second school, doing physics, I have never seen electricity. In Karamoja, there was one time they were going for exams, S6. Mm. And in about, uh, there was, I think it was National Council for Youth, or one of those youth organizations. They went, and I think it was two years ago, they went and did a, a, a survey in the secondary schools in Karamoja. I don't know whether they were about uh, 29 schools. Almost 95% of them, S6 students, did not even have mathematical sets. Thank you. So I am saying that they did not have mathematical, and yet they are going to compete with students from Kampala, from all these other places in science. So the point I'm saying now, you go to leave the people living in Kampala, Jinja here, Mbarara here. This, let's look at the whole of Uganda. You go to a place in Uyende district, there is no electricity. There is no equipment. The, 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 so the, the human resource is one of the issues, but my view, let us start with the laboratories and in government private schools, let him start with the facilities, equipments, and then human resource. But the strategy of human resource by a, a pair of discrimination, for me, I, the minister, the, the leader from the minister saying that they are doing priority. You cannot do priority by harming one group. That's not priority. That's discrimination. Okay. Discrimination is paying, treating people at the same level differently. So it can't be priority. Where are these Ugandans? Are the others not Ugandans? And should people wait for how long? This, this is the same strategy which was done to universities. Because I was chairman for Chambu University Academic Staff for five years. Hmm. I was chairman for Forum of Academic Staff for years. in the whole of Uganda for two years. This is the same which the president employed, and it's, it's, it's a problem. He said sciences must pay differently. Science lecturers in a university are paid differently from the arts lecturers. He said it's quite a problem. After which, he only increased the professor, and the professor didn't pay the others. And there's a problem in the university now, because one class, or when we, we teach a uni, in a university setting, a professor may have 10 hours, a senior lecturer may have 12, assistant lecturer may have, may have 14, you are in the same department, same chemistry, same work. That discrimination is not, is not a correct strategy. Honorable Mapenduzi, um, you have heard what uh, your colleagues here have said. Um, do you, do you, how do you see this being resolved? Um, starting with the, um, with the threatening letter by, by the PS that uh, teachers will be struck off the payroll in two days and the cows should take action um, if they don't go back to teaching. Is that a solution to this problem in your view, given what you, 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 you have been listening from your friends? Uh, my brother Charles, I think the, uh, the letter, just as you <coughs> stated, I, I don't think that is being solution oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to waste time talking about that because um, that, is, that is what I would refer to as an old fashioned management style. Mm -hmm. You can't solve problem by threatening people. Um, we, we, need to, we need to build an environment. First, it's, it's, it's extremely sad that uh, for the last few years, the country is beginning to get used to this kind of culture. The culture of creating confusion in schools and every time leaving our children in dilemma. And this is not just on the government. 
uh, even the teachers have a responsibility over this and um, you who is uh, the secretary general of the union and and I'm, I'm talking as as a parent I think there is need to encourage more dialogue. Even when we are faced with the most difficult situation, we still need to believe in dialogue. Because this country is ours. We are not going to run away from it. The children who are, today I spoke to the chair, uh, the, is it the coordinator or the chair of, of, of UNATO in my division, in Badege Laibi. He's, he's a teacher called uh, Geoffrey. I spoke to him and I wanted to know what is going on. And I also wanted to share with him my thoughts and plead with him. He gave me a very disturbing picture where in a number of schools, children go and the teachers are not teaching. And then what is so annoying is that the teachers... Are the science teachers teaching? Well, the information <laughs> I have got is that teachers are not teaching. <laughs> and, uh, we are going to have to define teachers now. <laughs> science teachers are different from teachers. You see, I don't like that because <laughs> teachers are teachers. <laughs> and you know... Um, the classes. No, that's the why ministry. I refuse to answer that. Because, <laughs> the, the, uh, the minister has created the classes. But you know, when, when the, the, we, we, we cannot be part of that mistake. We, we, need to, we need to make a difference. Um, so when I spoke to this gentleman, he gave me a picture of what is going on. And I said, you know, even among the teachers right now, there is conflict. A lot of the time is spent on trying to justify who is more important. And this comes as a result of frustration, bitterness, and now the teachers have to spend time trying to figure out how, whether they're important or not, instead of concentrating and planning to help the children. Look at how much time we are wasting in this. And so, now, this kind of environment being created is going to destroy a lot of the gains that you have already made. The ministry is making a lot of strides mm. in a number of areas. Mm. But you see, why would you allow, uh, obviously as you said, I, I, I fully support the president, the ministry, and government generally uh, in ensuring that teachers are given the environment they deserve, treated well, paid well. That is good. But you see, we cannot use the wrong approach in trying to do a good thing. The end result will be wrong. Because now, in trying to help the teachers get better, we are dividing them. But to you, as a ministry, you are saying, look, we want to first deal with this. This is a very tricky environment because we have to, teach, we have to treat the teaching profession as a unit. There, there are certain sectors that have to be handled a lot more carefully. Because the, impl the implication, you know, um, goes uh, a lot more deeper. So now, the children we have sent to school are not getting the knowledge they are supposed to get. And the gentleman next to you is vowing that their position is still clear. And, and my question as a parent is, so what do you want me to do now? Uh, Yonato, what do you want me to do? Minister of Education, what do you want me to do? Because that is what you are creating for the parents, but also the children. Now, where I think and where I feel that the approach being taken is probably not the best, is that even when we are saying we have to go slow in phases, there is no money. Look at the, 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 the disparity. So you have 
just like you put it, a district education officer who is supposed to supervise and ensure that uh, teaching and learning in, the whole district. in 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 Izoa area of jurisdiction is it's handled taking place. is taking place. Two million. And then the DO is is actually <laughs> almost getting afraid of even beginning to imagine how the people he or she supervises. How, the, how much does the DO get? About it's you want about two million. About two million, maybe two, about two point three million, something around there. When they remove taxes, it doesn't take home two million. It's about one point seven. Yes. Around there. About one point seven after after the tax. So with this new arrangement the science teacher is supposed to get more than the D, the DEO. Exactly. Even the diploma holder. All right? Even if the science teacher is a diploma holder, yes. he's supposed Three to million. get more than Three the million. DEO, Three million. who most Three likely million. is a master's holder. And the supervisor. So, so Charles, the supervisor of this Charles, teacher. The point is, the new structure, they are putting a graduate teacher at 4 million, mm. diploma. a diploma teacher at 3 million. Three yes. million. Mm. In, a, in one school setting, teach the one school setting. Yeah. But the headmaster, if he's of arts, for example, mm -hmm. will you stay at 1.5 million? And the district education officer at 2 million? And then which management will take place? Chairman, continue. <laughs> so so that's, that's where we are going to, to create a much bigger problem. <laughs> Actually, mm -hmm. if we are not careful, we, we, there, there are people who, uh, who are trying probably to bring down the entire education sector. Uh, but in but a very with what end? With what aim in, in mind? Well, may, maybe the president needs to reflect deeply on this. Are you but, saying he's being misadvised? Um, I, I think maybe people are not <laughs> telling him the truth. <laughs> and, 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 people and people like you are not telling the president <laughs> the truth? Well, well, because, see, uh, and um, uh, I'm glad that uh, Honorable Matenduzi is bringing out all these angles combinations and permutations in mathematics yeah. <laughs> because we are not running a sector in isolation. We have 11,000, around 11,900 science teachers mm. that we are talking about. Mm. The entire workforce we are talking about as scientists and science teachers in the whole country is just over 60,000. It's around 60,800. We have 133,000 primary school teachers. Now, the primary school teachers, they are neither humanities or arts teachers. They are no scientists, as in categorization, because they teach everything. If I'm in primary school, I'll teach geography, math, English, it is. Are they, are they benefiting from the enhancement? No, 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 they are not yet at, the, at that category. Where does science begin from? The category, no, of course it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Science begins at the lowest levels. That one is a no-brainer. Mm. But we are talking about in terms of implementation. You see, Charles, we, we have to appreciate that we have limited resources. We do. And when we do that, that is why Honorable Mapenduzi, uh, when I say Honorable, meaning he represents yeah, parliament. parliament. exactly. Um, next financial year. We have a challenge as Minister of Education. Now, when you look at the figures, in 2016, our budget was 2 trillion shillings. Mm. But this year, next this year, year, beginning you, you July, got four? he has given us 4.1 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. trillion. Mm. But now when you look at that, you think, wow, we have all the money to do everything. But actually, out of that 4.1 trillion, 2 trillion is going into wage. Okay. So we are left with the 2.1 trillion to build schools, to put a primary school in every parish, to put a secondary school in every parish, to erect a public university in every sub-region. So we have started this Gulu University. We are going to put up a constituent college of Gulu University in, in Moroto. So as a seed for but, but I, I not let, let, let me just say this. Let me just say this. No, no, I'm, I'm yes. just trying to show no. you how no, we have no. limited resources no. To meet all these demands. But let, let me now, just say this. What Honorable has um, to do is to say, mm -hmm. okay, if we want to remunerate well all our cadres, the workforce, then we have to make trade offs. And Parliament has to say, let's forego this and do this. For example, we already don't have 57 billion shillings 
to top up on a loan we got from the World Bank to construct 115 seed secondary schools. We started with 117 in 2019, April. Then, but, because of the cost of living and this that has happened. Us, no, no, I'm just trying no, to bring no, you no, the reality. We know that. No, no, Sarah, it is the reality that we have to make trade offs as a country. We cannot have our cake and eat it at the same time. For example, the 95 billion that Honorable Mapenduzi has given us, we have to make a trade off. We are not going to recruit the same number of teachers like we've been recruiting this year. So we have to enhance, but as we enhance, we are not going to recruit new teachers the way we wanted to. Okay. Just, just two things. Let me finish. Let me yes, finish. Yes. Um, One minute and then I bring someone. You, you, know, I you know, Charles, I, I, I am not against the increment. I am not against giving more money to science teachers. I'm not against, um, but is what we are doing trying to create an environment where teaching and learning will move on smoothly? No. How do we then salvage that? And I think that is where you have to reflect deeply and handle it before it's late. And, and I think it's important, just like this, this letter, uh, this, this, this letter which, which is uncalled for, I, I think the, 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 the people in government need to uh, encourage more dialogue. We need to encourage more dialogue. Because we are not going to succeed by, by, by trying to show how powerful we are. Yeah. But I also think... Are you saying that the PS is just trying to show power or she is trying to solve the problem? Well, when you She's begin to threaten... But by the way, you threaten those who are, who are powerless. <laughs> That is what happens. She's a man. You don't threaten people more powerful than you. You cannot you. threaten somebody more powerful than you. What do you do? Anyway. So, so Ukraine threatened uh, Russia. No, that was a joke. Uh, anyway, I am not going to talk about Ukraine and Russia. Please let me restrain myself. But, but this is what I'll say. Of, of course, if you are... No, don't talk about it. Yes. Don't talk about it. It was just of, of off course, the cuff. Of, of course, if I am to go to a boxing ring with you, that, that, would, be, that would be unfortunate because your weight is is obviously different um, oh dear. in in boxing oh you, dear. you 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 have to so but but what i'll say is uh, is that um for me as a parent i i feel the pain and um i think the best we have to do unato uh yes you are holding your position but even even if you really want that increment to be done you have to um because we, we, have to, we have to recognize that some steps have been taken from the time you started the discussion. I think that was 2018? Mm -hmm. 2018. From 2018, some steps have been taken. To me, those steps are not satisfactory. We have to do more. But if we are going to do it in a manner that completely cripples or paralyzes the system, the system then, then we are killing it then the whole thing is going to be about money, 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 money. To me as a parent, there are, there are a lot more issues I have to talk about. And I'll give you the picture of northern Uganda. Maybe later. Another part. Maybe I'll give you that picture. Later, later. So, so I, I, I want to emphasize that I think the Ministry of Education and UNATO have to continue dialoguing and find the best way to address this problem. Okay. We are not going to address it by saying we pay this other one uh, five million and the other one remains at 800,000. That's, that's, that is unrealistic. And it defeats you know, the, 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 the purpose for which dialogue should be promoted. Okay. So it has to be a win-win situation. Okay, Sarah, um, I, I need you to start from commenting on the Catherine's letter, um, especially if you can also because she has referred to laws, she has referred to standing orders, public service, and then making a threat of, you know, removing people off the payroll, and actually going ahead to direct town, you know, town clerks, cows, to do that. And then the issue of how this can be handled. Yeah, before I come to that unfortunate letter, I think it's important to, and, and through Dr. Mjimba, to tell the ministry and the, and the government, first of all, that this decision is scandalous. And I even wanted to ask Honorable Mapendus as to why Parliament approved this, because it's in the approved budget. 
Did you get the details or you just approved as a lump sum? Did you discuss the purpose and the implications as parliament? So th this decision is scandalous. You cannot intentionally disempower and erode the dignity and pride of teachers in the name of enhancement in courts. It's disenhanced. <laughs> you are doing the opposite of enhancement. If, if it had not come to your attention before, and you should thank UNATO for putting down, laying down their tools, and then causing this debate, because you have time to rectify this. You have time. It hasn't been implemented. So don't miss that opportunity. You cannot, first of all, it's, very, it's unconstitutional. The state objectives and national directives of state policy are very clear. You cannot discriminate against people and create classes in a discriminative manner. The, the professionals have explained on why even you've distorted the management structures of your ministry at, at, at the district level, at school levels. You, somebody earning 1.5 million, how do you supervise? <laughs> somebody earning 4 million. The constitution is very clear under Article 40, Clause 1B. Equal work for equal pay. <clears throat> These teachers pay, teach for the same hours. If you go to their timetables, everybody has the same workload per week. Unless you are saying that uh, arts teachers are going to teach two hours once a week, then they can go and find private work to subsidize uh, their earnings. And then the science teachers that you are now, you know, I, I, we are not saying sciences are not important. I pursued sciences up to a level. A law is my second degree. So you cannot say that they will study, teach for the same period, same time. They, they have the same qualifications. And then you say this one is four million, the other one is one million. For degree level, for diploma level, it is three million yeah. versus seven hundred and how? It defeats even simple logic. And I don't know what you are thinking, you people. By, by advancing <laughs> such a proposal, it's unconstitutional. And for us as a constitutional watchdog, our paperwork is getting read. We shall go to the constitutional court. Yes. Because the constitution is very clear. This enhancement is unconstitutional, and we are going to share it. And then you people will so be busy in court, and notice. our children will not be in school. You it see doesn't matter. You see. It matters. You see. No, because they, that's why I said they shouldn't miss an opportunity to rectify such a scandalous proposal. If you go into the best sphere of managing society, look at the pride of teachers during lockdown. We were all in tears. We were all driven to tears. Teachers laying bricks. Teachers uh, roasting maize on the road. You know, the distortion of an image of people that are a foundation of all of us and our children and everybody who can read and write in this country. We must denounce such acts. The intention ceases to matter if you don't take care of a balanced approach. You are distorting the intention. And you must rectify it. As I've given you notes, we are ready to go to court. It doesn't matter whether UNATO comes in or not. We are a constitutional watchdog, and we cannot allow a distortion of fundamental rights protected under the constitution. Um, Charles, coming to your question of the the permanent secretary in, the, in public service. I, I think she's overwhelmed. <laughs> because she, it is her work. No, but you see, if you write such an article, quoting Rose wrongly, threatening people, 
The Constitution protects the right to, 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 to lay down tools under Article 29. It's a fundamental right. So you cannot argue standing orders that you are already quoting wrongly above the Constitution. You cannot. The Constitution is supreme charge, and I cannot debate is somebody who is even distorting subsidiary laws and regulations. Um, actually, the teachers, I saw them quote Article 40. Article 40 talks Article about 40, um, economic rights, and it says um, every person, every worker has a right to form or join a trade union of his or her choice for the promotion and protection of his or her economic and, and social interests. The B part and C, which, which are more um, instructive, say, to collective bargaining and representation and to withdraw his or her labor according to law. And if you add Article 2, which talks about the supremacy of the Constitution... Why don't you the equal work for equal um, I will come to that after the break, but what I wanted to, to do is to buttress your point that I, I, I was laughing when I read the letter of the <laughs> PS, which was allowed to come out. I don't know whether <laughs> he, in the Ministry of Public Service doesn't have lawyers there. They shouldn't have allowed her to refer to a standing order as to be more superior to the Constitution. You cannot do Mental that. rights. You see. So, but let's go for a break right now. And when we come back, the discussion continues, and the discussion is about the industrial action by teachers. How can the dilemma be addressed? Let's go for the break now. This is Behind the Headlines. Gagan in your Kawaga or Pamela, a mananu garibans are a massindi by two Nicara Kagoma Maganjo. So Kavanda, Nicari and in Korea, younger at home, Yara a landline number calling here MTN. So we are quite sitting at your corona gamans as a harato. I'm calling you from MTN or Hanguira Motoka. I just said, Kali, not believing a sticky is auntie. So I'm so happy. Thank you, MTN Banange. It is real. Simply deposit 20k or more on your mobile money for a chance to win three Toyota Succeeds and money to 2,000 lucky winners every week. We're giving away 24 cars and over 2 billion shillings of mobile money. Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Get connected today with the MyAirtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months. 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only Airtel, the smartphone network Fun is our flavor When we're together, the vibe is pretty alright Our taste is pretty awesome we are Uganda's number one fruity refreshment. Enjoy Mirinda Fruity, Uganda's number one fruity refreshment. 
Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Multi Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602-963. Visit our office in Kampala at Sayuni Complex in Tinder. Mood Technologies, your professional research firm. Welcome back from the break. The break has gotten more fiery and uh, I am enjoying it already and uh, um, I pray that those issues come up for the public as well to share um, how the debate is now picking up, you know, the storm. Um, we are in the studio with uh, Sarah Birete, Honorable Jara Mapenduzi, Reverend Dr. Grace Lubare, Dr. Mujimba Dennis, and uh, Mr. Philbert Baguma. And the discussion is around the industrial action by teachers. Um, before we went into the break, uh, let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Mujimba. The, during the break, you know, your colleagues were uh, firing at you with a lot of questions. And I need us to start from even that basic. Um, are these teachers, you are the one in the Ministry of Education, um, so educators. Uh, is this enhancement, and we, has, we have agreed as a principle, the enhancement is good, the plan to, um, to, to, to the, the ideology of, uh, of, of, of promoting sciences is, is good for the nation and for the world. But are these going to be worked out in conformity with the payment scales for the teachers? How, uh, how is this going to be done? so that it doesn't appear discriminatory. Thank you, Charles. I think what, what we need to appreciate is that we are at the beginning of a very long journey. If you look at the current uh, public service pay structure, it is a single spine structure, meaning everyone fits in that level. If you go by that and you want to sprinkle, you know, if you raise so and so, you raise everyone below you will not reach a level where you want to attract the talent you want to attract. Okay? So, what, uh, and again, I, ag I agree respectfully with those who are agreeing with the ideo ideological policy position of the president, but disagreeing on strategy. But actually, this strategy works. Because unless you focus the few re little resources you have on a specific cadre, you will not be able to attract the talent that you want to attract. And a, a very clear example is how we were losing in universities. We were failing to attract high-grade scientists until enhancement had to be brought into play. You look at uh, what happened at uh, Soroti Flying School. When they were locking up those, uh, you can call them pilot instructors, into the government of Uganda civil service pay structure, that sorority flying school collapsed, literally, until they had to bring a pay, a pay package for them that is competitive in the market. Why? Because their competences are needed. And by the way, they are needed more in the private sector that can even pay much more. Now, we are having a struggle in the TVET institutions. The TVET is the Technical Vocational mm -hmm. Educational Training Institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, these people who teach there, we call them instructors. We have been failing to attract instructors. We don't need PhDs there. You need someone who's hands-on, can come, give them some skills on how to transfer knowledge, and they train our people in technical vocational skills. We fail to attract them because of the kind of pay we have. So, and if you go by the current setup of the civil service pay structure, you will not be able to attract the talent that you need. Therefore, we have to have a special intervention that goes against the normal way we do things, the unconventional one. What we also need to appreciate, Charles, and our audience needs to appreciate, is the issue of prioritizing 
and phasing your interventions. Let me give you an example of what happened in my family last year. I already have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. My wife already has another master's degree. She, I had applied for a second master's, started training, I had paid 5,000 pounds. An opportunity came for her to do something that is very related in the work she's doing. I seeded ground. I decided, you know what, let me forego, let the resources be directed to my wife to do the second master's. Now, will you call that discrimination in the home? It was prioritization. We sat and agreed that it is better for her to do a second master's degree. And for me, I, I laid back. I said, let, for, for, let, forget the 5,000 pounds I had paid. It is okay, let her go. Now, this is strategy. Now, in another family, a marriage can break up. Because of that, someone will say, I'm a man. But, but to you know, that, is the example relevant? No, no, it is relevant because <laughs> the prioritization, the priorita if you cannot uh, appreciate prioritization within your family, you will not be able to prioritize even in the school that you're leading. You will not be able to prioritize for a nation. If you have limited resources, if you have limited resources, you have to prioritize and phase your interventions. And that is what government is doing. And again, Philbert is a witness here. The number of times His Excellency the President said on Saturday that just be patient with us. He said, we have started the Rubimbi. I do not want to go with the Rubimbi of scientists and when I'm just a quarter away, I drop and pick up another Rubimbi. I don't want to have so many unfinished businesses along the way. So it is an issue of phasing because of limited resources. Absolutely. Charles, right now, the wage bill for government is around 6 trillion shillings. 6 trillion. Yes, about 6.3. Exactly. Now, if you take the approach, again, you, know, you agree with ideology but define strategy. If you take the approach of <coughs> let us take the entire 320,000 civil service workforce, okay? 320,000. Now, that is before you put in security. If you say that you want to move everyone and enhance them, you're already at six trillion with this kind of pay that we are criticizing. So if you want to increase everyone by the, even let's say 50, 500,000 shillings per month, how much money will you need? This is where Honorable Mapendus and the fraternity are there to guide the nation. With limited resources, we cannot do everything, otherwise we'll do a bad job. Therefore, the strategy of his excellency, the president, is actually appropriate. You, you know, I, so, sorry for interruption. I, I don't know why you people enjoy creating problems for yourselves. Because you are obviously creating problems for yourselves, but also creating problems for the country. If I have one million shilling, and I have 15 employees, okay, I have 10 employees. And, and I know there are certain tasks that uh, requires uh, a lot more focus. Mm. It would be good to say, okay, this mm. is one million shilling, mm -hmm. but instead of giving to five people 200,000 and the rest zero, why don't I give to the rest maybe 120,000 without going outside what is available? Saying, okay, why don't we share? However little it is, it's a sign of commitment. So, Honorable Mapenduzi, will you go with the philosophy of the 95 billion shillings that you have appropriated as next financial year to distribute it among the 169,000 teachers? It would be fair. Because that is 46,800 <coughs> shillings. You, you per see, and, and, and I think because I have interacted with a few science teachers, mm. and uh, they told me, you said, you know, uh, you people let government look for, 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 for another money. This one is meant for us, the science teachers, and they are trying to defend it. And I think for you, the science teachers who are watching, this, this is not about who is more important. It should be about how do we create an environment good enough for all of you, all right? <coughs> and it shouldn't be a struggle between the science teachers and art teachers. But it, that is what it has now become. It has, yeah. Because, so, so for because me, one, the, the science teachers now, from what I gather, and uh, I, I think I saw some letters to that effect, 
are now saying they have disowned you. NATO, yes, that's and, one and of them. And, 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 they, and, and that they, is where they the formed their own union mm. some time back. You formed it. <laughs> you you <laughs> see, <laughs> so, it. so Charles, who because formed they it? are everywhere dis defending so, you. So, so, Dr. Mjimba, yes, I, I don't sir. know your specialization, mm. but how would you feel at work if you had a colleague of your similar qualifications and there is a difference of three million in your earnings? How would you feel? And they're at the same level. You see, before... The difference is only Charles, the subject. I'm glad you've asked that question. Before I joined the government, I was working... Maybe the, even, let me also, let sector. me add another example. Yes, another spanner. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, are the permanent secretaries paid differently based on this one is an arts person the and this one is, is, uh, is a science person? Because <laughs> I know there are some scientists who are PSs, mm -hmm. the one of foreign affairs, ICT, my own PS, uh, is information, uh -huh, ICT uh -huh. is science. Mm -hmm. I know Dr. Diana, that mm -hmm. is science. Mm -hmm. But I don't know Catherine what her, the, the, her expertise is. Mm. Is she a scientist? Mm -hmm. Are they paid different based on that? Now, Charles, or we can even ask MPs. I, Are MPs paid differently <laughs> based on those subjects? Charles, I have sent you the pay at Sakura that has been operating in this financial year we are in. You can cross-check how, how PSAs are paid. But I know that part of the enhancement that is coming or planned for, again to attract and retain scientists, is that at a certain level, depending on where you are, if you're ahead, you'll be remunerated differently. Because I remember... I yes, remember, according to yes, structure, yeah, ac according, not according to what you studied. No, no, because, no, come on, it has to be according to how, what I studied, because I'm a scientist by virtue of what I studied. No, 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 so. wait, doctor, mm. let me clarify my okay, question. go ahead. The structure of government yes. is you have U1, U2, U3, depend, yes. that is a structure okay. of, of, of employment yes. in government. Yes. So uh, Charles put it clearly, yes. say PSCs, are they scientists, are they artists, do they earn different, or oh, they have a structure as PSCs? You, you oh, they don't, do. I haven't got oh, it. Yes. Haven't, just to add what got she says. Yes. Um, doctor, but, yes. so if you have U1, mm. and U1 for um, a DEO, mm. yes. is about <laughs> 1.7 after yes. deduction. Yeah. How do you call... That one of four million for it, 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 what is Charles, it? So, this so is exactly what I was saying. Four. That when so, so you four, yes, at four million mm. and you one, 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 yes, at one point seven, yes, that is insane, Charles. With the current enhancement intervention, <laughs> with the current enhancement <laughs> intervention, I work. agree that it does not fit within the structure. And that is why I said, if you're to bring everyone within the structure, we do not have those resources to fit in that. And again, he's my witness. Ma the majority of civil servants have not received an enhancement. But it is government strategy that let us first Do focus on Doctor, certain Doctor, you cadres. gave us your personal example. Yes, please. Of how you set priorities yes. between you and your wife. Yes. It's on that basis that I've asked you another personal example. Ye yes, please go ahead, sir. If you had somebody recruited in the ministry mm. with the similar qualifications yes. as you, yes. with a similar scale, yes. earning three million above what you earn, yes. how would you feel? And uh, would you stay on that job? Yes. I can tell you right now, there are some people who are doing my role, part of my role, and they're earning more than me. In the ministry? Yes. Which scale? What role what is reason? that? And, and, and that what is, and that what are, role is that? They are communication specialists. Actually, that is discrimination. It, it, it should be. No. <laughs> let me, let me, let, gentlemen. <laughs> I, I need to bring it up. Let, no, let me, I, let me read, let me read some they of the... <laughs> <as consultants. laughs> there, are, there are people out no, there. There, there is what I, wanted, what I wanted to clarify. Yes. What he's saying. Mm. Uh, actually, when I look at the doctor, I want to believe that you are not yourself. Mm. Mm. Why? <laughs> uh, and the Ugandans will live mm. to blame you for misleading the ministry. You can't tell me that the, the expression you are putting here is from a doctor. Have you ever been in a school setup to tell us exactly what you are saying? And you are saying that someone is going to earn four million 
and the counterpart earns 800,000, and you expect delivery yes. in the classroom two. Mm. I want you to go and read the public service negotiating and consultative dispute settlement machinery. Mm -hmm. The government is led by the head of public service in negotiations. Go and read section 7. And you are here busy saying the CBA was not fully signed because the, the, the solicitor general, because the, the, the permanent the secretary minister of <laughs> finance. Do you have anywhere, any document, where they represent government. Okay. The head of public service is okay. the secretary okay. of cabinet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The attorney general attends cabinet meetings. Therefore, whatever comes from cabinet, you want to tell me that the head of public service signed in the era, not knowing what he was signing. Two, you are talking of dialogue. When we left State House and Tebe, yes, and they assigned the ministries to discuss with us, mm. is this letter a sign of negotiation? Did we sit to talk about anything from Saturday up to day, other than this letter which has been sent? Charles, one point. One point. I'd like to join Mr. Baguma to, 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 to the charge. Actually, you, you please let the world see you. Your are communication. You are, you, are, you are not being fair to the state. Vice chancellors of public universities are paid the same money. It doesn't. There is nothing called science and arts. Vice chancellors, professors now of all public universities are paid the same money. Hmm. There is nothing called science and arts. Yes. So <laughs> why why would that bring? Why do you bring that to a secondary school now? In secondary school, the science is different, and in the university, the science is the same. Professors are paid the same money in a university. Point of correction, Charles. Mm -hmm. That differentiation is not there in head teachers. It is not there. A head teacher science is not paid differently from a teacher arts. So let's correct that. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Lubali is right. VCs are paid the same. Mm -hmm. To my understanding, you can cross-check that circular. Permanent secretaries are paid the same. At a certain at level of administration and management, there is no segregation of science and arts. Then, so you have agreed it is segregation? No, no, no seg not segregation in the negative way, but I, I mean in grouping, categorization. Seg segregation is permanent negative. No, 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 if you say you're segregating, no, Dr. Lubali, when you say that you're segregating data, it doesn't mean it's negative, okay? Charles. I are we talking about a, data to, or we are to, talking about to human beings? Here. Hmm. Mr. Baguma is presenting a picture of the future. Yes, because the enhancement, by the way, the teachers that we are talking about have not even received it. We know it's in the it budget. Is, it is taking effect in July. That's why it is being discussed. Okay. Now, and when, you, when you look at Charles, when you look at you the future of four million, and that is what the president <laughs> said on Saturday. I guess that is why these discussions are going yes, on, so that, that you can why. correct or nip it in the bud, in the bud as it were. That is why he he was told on Saturday, mm. and I I don't know why he's not saying it. He was told on Saturday that that disparity will have to narrow, and when? he. And he clearly, that now is a period of negotiation. That's why I'm telling because you, you said, are not with the reality. No. Go to a school setup and know what is there currently. But now, we, that is the negotiation they have given him an olive leaf to utilize. But a negotiation followed by a letter threatening that no, will strike because, off the payroll. Because to, you not to, to utilize you not by to doing is what? Not what is up. the role of the ministry? Who is supposed to invite who? You are the one it, supposed it to utilize that. Why are you throwing it at you not? We've extended the leave to him, and that is what Honorable Is it you not to, to invite the government? That is what Honorable <laughs> Mapenduzi was saying. Let us leave, let us communicate. Mm -hmm. Let us engage. And engagement is what will get this stalemate out. M Mr. Okay. M Dr. Mjimba. Yes, Sarah. You will have no job if you don't have teachers. It, is your, it should be in your best interest to make sure you know, that your teachers are well facilitated 
and are working Sa under satisfactory yes. conditions. Yes. Sarah, is, coming. Sarah is preaching to the converted. No, but you are saying it is for you not to utilize. <laughs> you know, Sarah, is you are for preaching the to the converted. In uh, in uh, in uh, twenty, when we were working on uh, the budget and trying to find funds to sort out this, the first lady always was saying, "We cannot leave out art teachers because you need the whole unit to have." She a was land. right. Exactly. Why and didn't she you? Was right. Why didn't you take her no, word? No, wait, wait a minute, Charles. You have again to come down and say, "What strategy are you going to use given limited resources?" Dr. Gubale, Rubale talked about the issue of uh, uh, teachers not being in class. I, I think you said uh, the, you know, you've never see, used those experiments, CTC. Do you know one of the reasons that we have for science teachers leaving is private teachers taking out for moonlighting? You know the, the you know the Actually, trend. they are not science okay. teachers. They are teachers of science. Teach <laughs> Don't okay. confuse the public. <laughs> they are teachers of science. They, they are not science teachers. Linguistic gym, gymnastics here. <laughs> Whatever I want to call them. Science I am teachers, enjoying the company of science. teachers. Exactly. <laughs> and by the way, this has they are the best, very well. They are the best okay. professionals for me mean, because don't they don't made us And okay. what is oh, talking yeah. about, what Dr. Alvarez was talking about, that we need laboratories in place. All these schools we are putting up, we are putting up laboratories in them they are complete schools with equipment yes we are equipping them and that all over the money. country all over the country 115 17 schools that has already been done in july we are beginning on another batch of 61 schools you know then the other example i gave you the 115 you, you know which now we you, cannot you know, start you know, on. doctor i yes, i please. just arrived from i arrived from aroa yes uh, a few <laughs> minutes to the program mm. <laughs> we need to talk about the schools you are building Yes. That's um, another debate. That's, that's another debate. That's another debate. Yes. That's that's another another debate. debate. Yes. So, okay. Now, can I, can oh I just God. hold all of you yes. okay. and, uh, and bring in the public? Because they are very important. This okay. discussion is so, for them. Um, let me start with the one to at least relax you, to make you laugh. Uh, someone has sent a message and says, just in, that arts teachers have asked the science teachers to stop using English for teaching yes. because it is not science. <laughs> that, is the, that is the light one for you to just, start with. Just. Meanwhile, the serious ones, <laughs> Nuaha Julia says, I think demands by teachers is surely in a bad timing. Teachers should remember that they spent two years while being paid doing nothing during COVID. The government didn't hold their salaries. I'm of the view that they allow government to pay them in a phased manner. That's Julia's. Um, Nelson Tumumanye says, I think art teachers should go back to teach as they are demanding salary increment. Um, Willie Wilbert from Manafa says, the PS is making empty threats. She knows very well that teachers cannot be fired simply because of the legal, um, the legally guided strike they have embarked on. Better they consider negotiating with them than what she is dreaming to do. Areas from Mutundwe says, I go with the Reverend's explanation on the saga of teachers' sit-down strike because surely it will bring salary disparities and good and poor supervision of government um, entities. Um, Angudru Caesar from, uh, is, uh, from Mount Elgon studying civil engineering says, we want government to increase all public servant salaries. How can government fail to increase arts teachers' salaries and primary teachers' salaries? Uh, Sergeant Bernard says, my question is to Dr. Mujimba. Ask all those leading the education sector in Uganda, from the minister to the lowest cadre, um, if, they have, um, <laughs> if they have their children in public schools. The responses you will most likely get will tell you that the objective they have for public schools um, is, is where a low earning citizen is expected to take his child is not the best. Um, Semuju Faizo in Rubaga says this industrial action has proved this industri industrial action has proved to us that art subjects are not useless as they are being underrated. So since we have realized that let, since we have realized that 
let the government come up with a salary review commission of, for all civil servants. Nat, Natal from Chireka says, I'm not a teacher, but I, for me, I want this government politicians um, who earn bulky to stop threatening teachers instead of having amicable agreement. You expect teachers to go and shout in the class and stress themselves. It, they, she, she, he or she did not finish it. That's Natal from Chireka. Teacher Asimwe Patrick says, I don't know whether the MPs will be there without art or primary teachers. And me, I don't know the number of MPs who offered sciences only. There are so many. Um, there, are so many. <laughs> there are many. But how many people in the Ministry um, of Education? I'm a teacher from Kamuli. I, I will <laughs> even bite the upper mouth, but no return to class. My daily expen expenditure. <laughs> Kaunga, 3,000. 3, Chaco, 2,000. Two Spices, 1,500. Bread, 1,500. Soap, 2,000. <laughs> Mukene. <laughs> Tomatoes, 1,500. Sugar plus tea leaves. Transport and airtime, 3,000. Total, 16,500 per day. Then when I multiply this by 30 days, the calculation has not added up. And then he says, um, this teacher says, how will I develop myself with this kind of pay? I am not going back to school. This is what this teacher is saying. There are other messages I will be getting off uh, of uh, Twitter, mm. and then I will read as we, <coughs> we, we, we go into the discussion. But uh, Mr. Mujimba, the, most of the questions have been directed at you. The, um, there is an important thing that uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Robare talked about. Let's imagine you succeed in forcing the teachers back to school because they are looking for employment, following the letter of Catherine. Let's imagine it works. Do you think that you are doing a good service to this nation, to the children who are studying in those schools, and that you expect the teachers to really be forced into the class and they teach with passion I and am, seriousness. I'm so glad, Charles, that you brought that one out. As they say, you take the horse to the river, but you'll not force it to sip the water. OK? That is why, first of all, the branding that that is Catherine's letter. Uh, she, has it. she has yes, signed it. Yes, she has signed it. She has signed it. Let's, signed let's it, start from the fact. She, she has signed it on behalf of government. So we don't it, have that fact. It is she not, has signed it. it she yes. is in charge of public service. <laughs> and but, please don't take away that responsibility for her, from her. Please don't. <laughs> Just go to your explanation. <laughs> because she has signed it. We know it is her. <laughs> and she, we, with, with the due respect, she is in charge of that. <laughs> and she didn't indicate that there was a commit seating mm -hmm. and this is what they have come up with okay okay uh, let me go <laughs> but that, 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 that is government uh, communicating that Charles as I'm glad that you brought out the issue of uh, will you force the teachers that is why our approach is engagement as government it is engagement 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 and we want to be consistent in uh, communicating, creating increased awareness about the priorities that government has set. Charles, we believe that people will come around. Mm. Mm. By the way, since the enhancement of uh, scientists and science teachers or teachers of science uh, pay, this I think is the first time that the whole thing has gripped and gotten attention. Mm. And which is good, good attention. I think uh, when we hear different perspectives, hopefully we shall pave a better way forward. True. But in engagement and telling people that if this is a short-term intervention, as the president said, that disparity will be closed. Now the question is, how soon? How soon will it be closed? There are different factors that will determine that how soon. Number one, it is availability of resources. And resources here, we are talking about the funds. We, we, we saw that, and uh, Dr. Rubari can testify to that, uh, professors, and I think associate professors, took time to get to the 15 million. 
But now, I think over the last two financial years, that's when they actually hit that target. So now we can raise, we are no longer saying we want to take the professors to what was pledged. They hit that ceiling. Uh, and point of information, mm -hmm. the, the, world is, the world is watching. Yes. The president in 2015 spoke about university lecturers. Yes. They are professors, associate professors, True. senior lecturers, True. lecturers, True. As lecturers. True. In fact, I want to inform Mr. Waguma, yes. the idea, Dr. Mujima is using the wrong one. To say that some people go and others don't go. In universities, that's what you have done, and it's the wrong thing. They all improve, increase for professor, and as a professor, senior lecturers, lecturers were left out. And there is a big crisis. Let's go to ministry. The present increase for the, for the PS to 15 million and left a director at 3 million. You know the crisis. So the, the issue, but the issue of safety, one group go, you leave others, government has proved not, not to work and has not been effective in that one. And there is a crisis in the university which you know. They have written to you, there is a crisis in the university. Charles, I'm not disagreeing with what uh, Dr. Lubadi is saying. All I'm saying is that there are categories of uh, human resource in the sector whom we have already hit the enhancement target. And there is a government commitment whereby we shall make sure that those targets of enhancement that we've set ourselves shall be attained pending availability of resources. By the way, we are talking of this, and again, Mr. Baguma is a witness here. All this was said. There is a whole line of different employees of government that are being planned for in the long-term pay targets, but, but including the security forces. Dr. Mjimba, I think you are not being fair to Mr. Waguma. Mr. Yes. Waguma is speaking for all the teachers. Yes. Whether he's a witness or not, he's here as a voice of the yes. group. But Sarah, what I'm saying is that let Mr. Waguma communicate the full package that was communicated. Because the, the president gave hope. He gave yes. hope. And what we are saying is that Which the, hope? Issue, the hope is one, there is commitment of government to take on the art teachers as well. To where? Number two, to the targets that have been set. And where <laughs> are those targets? Can you say Can them? Can you tell the, them to the, the public? You face, you face the screen no, no, I, and I, say I them. I don't have that information with me. Then why, why no, are no, you no, deceiving the nation? No, no. He said, he said, and by the, that's why I'm saying why aren't you communicating it? He said, if the scientist is at 4 million, perhaps a, a art teacher can be at 3 to 3.5. Where is that doctrine? You, you no, no, but Bakuma, you, you heard him say it. Are you saying no, he never said I it? I am asking you, where, where is, is that information? information? Because the argument we have, you are saying it is not fully signed. Mm. And yes. yet it is fully signed, according know. to the law which we have. What is your source? On negotiations. Now, for you, yes. show us the, that, that, the, the, those pay targets which okay. you are talking okay. about and mention them. The okay. world is seeing you. Okay. Next time, Charles, I am going to come <laughs> with all that data. I'm going to come with all that data. But he's very aware that there are long-term pay targets of government. Where are they? But you are talking to Ugandans. You are yes. not talking to Firbat. Yes, no, no. The I'm targets, talking to, the I'm targets talking we to have are in the CBA which is a duty signed, which you have said it is, it is not, not signed, signed. Not duty but according to the law, signed. according to the law, mm. go and read section 7, mm. the head of public service leads the government side. Section 7. So, if you come here and say those are not fully <laughs> signed, and you talk of the pay targets, where are he those wants pay to targets? Refer to it convenient. So that we can remove our eyes from the CBA and now put it you on give the pay targets. The ministry information. Charles, that is why Honorable Mapenduzi guided very well that let us continue engaging. If you not to is willing. But you are threatening. No, no. By the way, they are also threatening government. So, but, yeah, so don't okay. say that you are engaging. No, no, no. You can come from a uh, government. As government, as government as the state, the state as cannot be threatened. For us, for <laughs> us we have but evidence. By who? For us, by, we have by evidence. Charles, by the United No, leadership. they cannot. No, no, Charles. I guess they, you're making that in jest. No. You bring Charles, evidence. They are, they are blackmailing <laughs> government. No. How? As Honorable Mapenduzi said, for the last three, since 2018, you want to say you want to say our government, our state is the state is weak, 
to be threatened by its own workers? <laughs> is that what a spokesperson no, no. of government want, wants to send out there? They are by saying that we are not doing anything, but we are actually working. And that is what Honorable Mapenduzi <laughs> said right here. He said, let us recognize the small steps that government has taken. From 2016 to date, but, but doctor, we let, have been... Do, doctor, let me, let me give you some picture. I, yes. I told you um, my background is teaching, and mm. I taught for um, uh, a few years, about five years. Yes. So when, when uh, he says, uh, you know, you can push a teacher to get to class to teach mm. in this difficult situation, and uh, no value will be added, I understand. Um, let me give you an example of just two teachers that I interacted with. About a month ago, I came to the Minister of Education. Mm. This is an old man who, uh, who got involved in an accident, mm. a secondary school teacher. Got paralyzed, he's on wheelchair, his name got deleted, uh, he's, he's uh, is, is in a terrible condition. So I moved with him to the ministry. Mm. And his stories, you, you then know that there are people who probably do not know what the teachers are going through. I have another primary school teacher. He's, he's, he's a good friend of mine. One time he told me, you know, uh, my children have grown. One has gone to university. Two are in secondary school. I cannot uh, pay them because what I earn is that. Uh, and he said, mm. he said every day he goes to class, but before even finishing teaching, he's already thinking about how to make money. Yes. He has a motorcycle. Mm. So he's a border border. He has to find time to ride mm. because he needs to send his children to school. Understandable. There is that one in university mm. who needs to be paid as a private sponsored student. Mm. So this is a teacher mm. who is trying his best, mm. but life is hard. Mm. He's trying to make, you know, ends a meet. Mm. Now, what do you expect from such an individual who now has to run yeah. everywhere yeah. to uh, deliver knowledge mm. to children, but also make sure his own mm. are able to study. Mm. In the afternoon, he's a border border cyclist. In the morning, he has to be in class. Uh, and this is I, the kind of environment we are Charles, talking about. Uh, Honorable Mapenduzi has painted the plight not just of those two teachers but representative of so many people. Now, in another thing, service. another thing, yes, let please. me just conclude. Um, today I was in, in Ajuman, I mean yes. in, in Arua. The problem is not only at, at, at ministry level, not mm. only with you, with the education. people in the state, mm. even at local government level. Today we discovered imagine ghost teachers being paid, and there are some teachers who are paid less, and you take more than three years to even Get on the pay what you, you did not pay. There are teachers who take long to access payroll. Mm. Huh? Mm. It is even worse with pensioners. People, so there is a problem. And, and for me, yes, we are trying to look at mm. improving salaries and yes. all that. But as we deal with that, let us also try to work on the system. How we manage, you know, the question of payroll management is a problem. I'm so glad, Charles, that uh, Honorable Mapenduzi has brought out that. By the way, Charles, I've sent you a document that shows how we have been increasing salaries for the different <coughs> cadres in the education sector, the teaching I, and I, I have staff. seen it. Exactly. Um, but I've um, also seen another, another one. Someone else from Parliament has yes. also sent me uh, um, the complete um, enhanced that, that you were talking about. This person says, Charles uh, Mujimba is talking about UPDF also not enhanced, but I have here a document from Parliament for enhancement of UPDF across all board for 2022-2023, from private to uh, general. No, so uh, just let him not refer to that. I, I did not say not refer no, to UPDF. I did not say that they are not enhanced. In fact, even the president told us on Saturday that the private has been brought up to the level of a teacher. Hmm. Yeah, he said it. So we know that they are there. So I think maybe it was not, he, the person didn't hear me well. They're also being, no, it's not really enhancement, it is more of an increment. 
enhancement, is, if we had really talked the way we are talking, is what UNATI is calling this big leap. Now, Honorable Mapenduzi brought out something very critical of payroll management. The Minister of Education is not responsible for putting employees, teachers, on the payroll. He was, he's from the local government, and when he was there as LC5 chairperson, his district was doing very well in Gulu. The issues of payroll are at local government level, at district level. We recruited 2,700 teachers in November, December last year. But by April, they were not yet on payroll, secondary school teachers. So, yes, there are issues, and these issues have to be handled as a whole government approach. So when it comes to having, making sure that teachers really, when they're in the class, they will teach, because that is the big question. We are saying if you do not, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're willing, go back and teach. But as you're rightly saying, they may go in class and just sit back. But that is where we are saying that as government, we are coming in with hope, saying that this situation we are handling for enhancement of science teachers is not permanent, that disparity is not permanent. We are going to come up with an intervention that also increases the salaries for the arts teachers. It is just a period, an issue of phasing, and that is what we want you not to appreciate. But Can you not to utilize the negotiation, the communication channels that are present? Do, and by the chance, Jimba. above all this, eh, let us, you, you, you all know, Informality is the oil that runs formality. I think it is not good for us to keep on writing circulars and notices, etc. Walking, we've had uh, FASPU. FASPU would always walk in. Even there are many strikes that have been averted through informalities. Doctor, let me ask so this. So we encourage you not to, to also take that approach. Doctor, let me ask yes, this. Sir. You know, mm. does not mean you create a crisis. For example, already our inequalities as a country, we are at 0 0.41 coefficient. Very wide inequalities in our society. You could have phased the other way. If you had equity and equitable enhancement at the back of your strategy, you could have said that let me lift science teachers from 1.2 million to 2 million the degree holders. Lift the diploma holders, maybe with addition of 500,000. Then spread the rest to, to, through the artists. That would also be enhancement, and that would give better hope than lip service. You see, and maybe, yes, my sir. last question before you respond, the, the, the Students Association, Uganda National Students Association, have issued the, a statement. Unsa. Yes, in regard to the strike. Mm. They are saying teachers are tired of empty promises since 2018. What is your take on that? I think one, one of the things, and Charles, you have the facts. I've shared with you the facts. We have been giving increments to teachers and academic staff since 2018. The evidence is there. Now, the only thing is how much. Because like in 2019, a primary school teacher, I think, got an increment of around only 60,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Again, you look at, we need to appreciate the numbers we are dealing with here. As I told you, for secondary school, you're dealing with 11,900 science, science teachers or teachers of science. <laughs> then for primary school, you have 133,000. You are saying primary is not part of this. No, no, but it, it is part of the group that UNAT is advocating for. And we are saying they should also come on board. And by the way, let me tell you and then encourage the public. There is a saying in my language that... Uh, as in a case which has been delayed to be had in the courts of law gives you a better strategy or approach to look at it and package yourself better. Why am I saying this? The national teacher policy that we passed <coughs> has actually recommended that over the next eight years we need to phase out and have primary school teachers as graduates. Now, one of the questions the Minister of Education also posed, because we are not the ones who manage the pay structure, it is Minister of Public Service, was we brought in the issue of this uh, policy position. Are we going to enhance, in quotes, a primary school teacher 
based on the current or we should also be futuristic and enhance having in mind that a primary school teacher within the next three four years is going to be a graduate teacher so those are the things that are working in our benefit but what i want to encourage you not to and your fraternity encourage the teachers to go back to the classroom Yes, because we are not going to allow you taking, to taking kill, extreme to kill education. Taking extreme positions of you're not in the classroom, but meanwhile negotiate. I think it's not going to be helpful for any of us. Why parents. are you lying, the nation? I have asked you a simple question. When we were in State House and TV on Saturday, the president said, Minister of Public Service. Minister of Education, Minister of Finance, go and uh, discuss these issues. Mm -hmm. Today is which day? Wednesday. Wednesday. The only communication we have received from government is a, a letter intimidating teachers, quoting wrong things. Charles, again, let's go back to the issue of engagement. Engagement, <laughs> engagement, engagement. <laughs> Just we walked out of the, the venue on Saturday, but let us ask you now to have you walked to public service and say, by the way, the president said we should engage. When are you calling us? But for as a ministry, yes, please. Aren't you bothered by the, the runners who are not? No, we are because then in what our, are you doing? In our if you are schools, blaming you, not what in, are you in doing? In our primary you? schools, we have eight million learners that are affected. Why are you pushing the blame on you, not? No, no, because you not to took the first step of withdrawing service. So they should chase after you. Bwana no, Charles, no, no, no. It Charles, is not a, a Charles, about change. Yeah. There is a point yes, which please. Dr. Mjimba, mm. we are losing focus. Hmm. The issue is discrimination. You, yes. you can say from morning up to evening. <laughs> the issue is called discrimination. And I've told you the complications it has. Management complication, motivation complication, and the government has kept shifting its positions. If in 2018, Hono Baguma uh, and company and government reached a position, 18, 19, 21, 20, 23, the closing is supposed to 2023. Yes. When all teachers are supposed to be at a pay target. Now we are reaching, we are now reached 2023. 20, we want a are, target. You have picked one group. You have got one group. Mm. You want to run the target. But let me repeat for you my last point. Mm. Uh, yes, please. If your target is to promote science, yes. you are taking a wrong strategy of discrimination, of paying one group and leaving the others. And let me tell you, the teachers in, sub, in secondary school, mm. these subjects are not competitors, they are complementary. Yes. And get my, that English word proper for me. Yes. The subjects are not competitors, they are complementary. English language, mathematics, physics, biology, geography, history are not competitors, they are complementary. So the teacher of English, when he's teaching English, People will pass physics because they know English. To demean a teacher of English and say if you want physics now. So the point I'm saying finally, Chair, I'm saying that the strategy you are taking to cause a discrimination and pay a teacher of four million, leave this education officer at two million, leave a headmaster at two million, leave a primary school teacher, because you want only these teachers of senior and senior six and maybe a few in the in the your aim of promoting science will not be achieved. Better talk with Baguma here and continue to see how best can we promote teaching and education in the whole country. What you are doing is discrimination, you want to achieve your objective. Charles, okay. um, Dr. Allow me, allow me, there is a, a good message that has joined the discussion here. Yes. Um, this is from the... Uh, from uh, Dr. Baromus. He says, I'm watching the show. Um, Charles, thank you for, for, the, for the good show. Government has the goodwill to increase the pay for all public servants, but it will be done in a phased manner. Over the years, government has been enhancing the pay of teachers at all levels. Science plays a critical role in transformation of society, and that is partly why scientists in government have been prioritized for now. Yes. 
the rest of the public servants, including non-science teachers, to be understanding and patient as salaries get enhanced. We feel for the teachers, but we urge them to get back to class as these issues of welfare are being handled. Industrial action and belligerence at this moment in time may not yield much. Thank you, Minister in charge of National Guidance and Government Spokesperson. Who also uh, led the strike once at the market? He led the strike. <laughs> yes. What was the reason for the strike? <laughs> 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 church, but As really, an Honorable Chris Mariomusa said. As an intern, yes. was it for pay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> church, Honorable Mariomusa said it all. I yes. wrapped it up well. <laughs> Faced That's manner, a good one. we are not discriminating. Yeah. It is an interim issue. We need to attract and retain scientists, as I said at the start, because of the phase of socioeconomic transformation that we are in as a nation. Mm -hmm. okay. Number two, the fact that we are not yet carrying on the Lubimbi of the arts teachers and other civil servants does not in any way mean that they are less important. It does not. There is another, another, another senior government official, but who has said, don't mention my name. Mm. That must um, be a coward. The person, <laughs> says, a coward. the person says, what is the intended outcome of this disparity in payment? Was this decision based on a study? Mm. Are there Which countries <laughs> with such there disparities no where such, such disparity has been successful? <laughs> <laughs> it is not there. And, uh, no. no wonder the person doesn't want to be named. <laughs> yeah. uh, and by the way, by the way, even in we the ministry itself, mm. because you have people who are in charge of sub regions in the Ministry of Education and Sports. If you went to the ministry itself, you can get surprised what they are saying. Even in but government just, itself, just to, just to I, 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 I just want you to take keen interest and know what is in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. You go and find out from the ministry itself, Ministry of Education and Sports, Go to Ministry of Public Service and see uh, and hear what these commissioners are saying. They are the ones who are preparing the documents against their will because they are not doing their technical work. They are only implementing <coughs> directives. And that's why I am telling you that you are going to be on record among the people who are killing the education of this country. Charles, um, uh, Ch Charles, let, let me just the, come doc in. Doctor, uh, there is also someone, in, doctor. There um, is someone called uh, Omon Roni from Nebi, and he says, Charles, help me ask, doctor, why the Basas, <laughs> who have been employed by Education Service Commission, have never been considered in salary enhancement from 2012 up to today, up to today, Yet the bursars and teachers have appointment from Education Service Commission in U5 scale. And the Ministry of Health Salary Enhancement cuts across all, be it those in records or as carries. Uh, Charles, I think I would need to first get more facts on that uh, before I can contribute to it meaningfully. Mm, but but yeah. let me just say yes, this, uh, ahead, Doctor. Um, I think... No, let him first answer. Okay. Yes. Let yeah. him first answer. I, I also want to clarify something that has been in the public domain. When, when we talk of uh, enhancement for science teachers, I think we've used science teachers a lot, and people think it is only the teachers. But it actually talks even all those people that are supporting the teaching in the laboratories, the technicians, etc. They are all part of the enhancement structure. So they are not going to be uh, left behind. Okay. In this, yes. Okay. Um, I, we are left with only four or five minutes. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give each of you one minute to, to wind up, make your last comment, and uh, try to, in that one minute, try to g put together everything that you want to say. I will um, start with you thank, since thank you are you. Just... Hopefully, one, one minute, uh, 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> doctor, I think uh, all this is not going to take us far. The, the situation out there is, is, is not good and needs to be very quickly uh, salvaged. Um, let's, let's remember 
that the schools were closed for two years. Uh, we lost so much because of COVID. We are in June, going to July, the time when schools are busy preparing the children for, for mocks, uh, the exams. Mm. Uh, they have about two months mm. and we'll start having national examination coming, starting from primary to uh, secondary level. And I think if we are realistic enough, we should, just as I said at the start, let's encourage dialogue. Let the teachers go back to class. Uh, but where we have a bit of a challenge, Doctor, and you need to take this, and, and uh, please tell the people you work with, especially those above, to accept that we cannot work in isolation. There are things that we need to uh, humble ourselves and, and uh, try to, you know, negotiate and agree for the good of, you know, of, of, of the education sector. It's, it's going to be extremely difficult if you're not saying this is our position, and then the ministry is saying this is our position, and then for a month or two, the education sector is paralyzed. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to us. As, as parents, as, as the people. And for me, dialogue, as I said, is important. Let's get back to the drawing board, let's negotiate. Uh, it may not necessarily mean adding the money now, but we first need to demonstrate that goodwill. Because uh, in 2018 you agreed, but again you made a statement which is quite <laughs> contradicting, that you know, there was that negotiation, <laughs> but the document is not, not, not signed. It's mm. dangerous now dangerous. that sends a very bad Dishonest signal thing. to these people, and it's okay. Mm. So meaning even what we agreed is not being honored. Now we need to build that confidence. We need to, we need to develop trust. And, and that will help us go far. Mm -hmm. and, and for us as parliament, we, we are committed to supporting. Supporting government so the initiatives are fulfilled. I fully agree that science teachers have to be paid well. But how we do as it well should... As well as other teachers. Yes. As, as well as other teachers, but how we do it should be done in a manner that is not going to distort, that is not going to destroy the, 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 the sector, and then teachers are busy fighting. By the way, even in schools now, there are, there are some learners who keep on referring to teachers as uh, oh, yes. comedians oh, and yes. entertainers oh, yes. and all that, and they now, <coughs> because there is this statement that has been going on that, you know, uh, our teachers are not important okay. and Ill. we need to change from okay. that tone. Sarah. <coughs> so, may I think that uh, the Ministry of Education and the people who are a party to this decision are very insensitive. They have not even taken into consideration the skyrocketing commodity prices that have made life unaffordable, even for people who are paid well. So in this kind of situation of high cost of living, you create a disparity of people that have invested in their education at the same level, degree holders, diploma holders, you create a disparity of three million at a go as a government. The ministry has lost touch with reality. They are distorting their own intentions and they are distorting the image of education, which is the foundation of our society. And maybe if they are overwhelmed, they need to ask for help. But what is happening, you must get back to a drawing board, listen to the people and review. And that's what the leadership demands. Right. Thank you very much. Someone sent in info, an interesting one here and said, Charles, thanks for the show. Um, we wish that you can give another time for this show. In local governments, planning department, statistics department, uh, are paid as science more than the district planner, who is their head of department. Actually, today, a chief, <laughs> Charles, a yes. chief administrative officer told us and said, by the way, you people are talking about increasing salaries. What about us? Mm. I'm the accounting officer. Mm -hmm. You expect me to do a good job. You are paying me 1.7 million. <laughs> okay. That's the, the dilemma. Dr. Robari. Thank you, Charles. Um, 
For me, I would like to ask the Minister of Education not to implement that structure. It will, it will defeat the logic of promoting science, it will distort education, it, will do, it, it distorts the image, it, it, it affects the entire system and functionality, it is not practical, it can't yield results. The Minister therefore should meet with the teachers and the, every group and I agree. And my position would be, if as of today, the man available is that one, they share it to all across board teachers, let them move stage. If the, you get one million, add. You get two, add. But teachers who have a degree must get the same money. And should not get money more than their supervisors. A teacher should get money which belongs to me in U4, not more than a headmaster who is in U2, not more than a district education officer, not more than a commissioner. Look at the commissioner, the Minister of Education. Can you imagine a whole commissioner is in earning two million? So that one. And lastly, Mr. Baguma, the question which he, Dr. Mujingo presents that which shall be in a phased manner, that is no. And your group must resist that. Phased manner will not work. Let everybody go at the same But can, can I ask you a question? Is there, is there a way to resist that different and allow the children to get back to class? Is there a way, Mr. Baguma, we, please, let's teach these children. But that, that they cannot for, teach you can unless they take well, well, we, well, we, we need to figure out how you it works. You see, teaching is different <laughs> from <laughs> other <laughs> professions. You cannot teach unless you are psychologically prepared. Exactly. Uh, and therefore, teaching is not like any other profession. And that is what they mm -hmm. have failed to understand. Mm -hmm. And I want to be on record. That the confusion you are bringing into the teaching profession will follow you today and tomorrow. You cannot have a diploma holder earning more than a head teacher, earning more than a DEO, earning more than an inspector of schools, earning more than a human resource officer who is going to manage the payroll earning more than a town clerk, earning more than a cow. Yes. Uh, and you think what you are doing is promoting yes. science in this country. I, I want to tell you, you may look at UNATO executive as UNATO, UNATO, but I want you to look at the consequences of the actions that are being done today. And I want you to get interested, if you want, by the way, I want to give you a simple scenario. We have different associations of people who work in the government. I want you to invite Uru, um, the, the Uruga, yes, Uganda Foroko, local government, for local government. Mm -hmm. invite the association of Actually, cows, they are also, they are also threatening cows, to down tools cows and line. town clerks, invite the association of human resource officers, invite the association of DEOs, and the municipal education officers, invite the association of inspectors of schools, have a national dialogue, and hear what Ugandans are saying. Before you ditch the education of the innocent Ugandan children. We are not saying this because we, want, we, we don't want our counterparts, the, the teachers of science, to earn. We want them to earn. But let government look for more money and increase for others as well. But without that, forget that there will be teaching and learning in this country. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mujimba, finally. Thank you so much, Charles, for this opportunity. Yeah, these engagements are always a, form, a platform to get feedback and also uh, a, li a litmus test of how are things uh, feeling or going on. Now, I would like to reiterate the point that has been raised by some of my colleague panelists. Dialogue engagement. Mm -hmm. Extreme positions are not helpful in a crisis situation. Number two, can we leave the reason for the person whom we exist for at the center? And that is the learner. Mm -hmm. 
in everything that we are discussing. Let's have the learner at any level in the picture. Three, let us do as much as we can to try and appreciate why the policy direction is this way. Because until we appreciate that we need to attract and retain these scientists, we will always think that the arts and humanities are not necessary. But they are actually necessary. These issues we are talking about management of the payroll and what? Uh, for you to plan for your human resource. Th those are, that is human resource management. Those are not scientists, but we need them. And these are the discussions that we need to promote instead of isolating scientists and thinking that they are more important. I think also the tone in our discussions needs to change. Lastly, <coughs> Mr. Baguma, everyone in the public service understands the plight <laughs> because they are all paid very low. All of them, they are paid very low. So you're just preaching to the converted. They know, they don't need to be convinced. But um, one of the things we have, one of the things we have to do, and it's very important, by the way, you have to support government, push its priorities, given limited resources. As long as you have limited resources, you have to prioritize. And prioritization comes with timing. And when you talk about timing, you cannot implement all your interventions at once. You need to face them. Otherwise, I thank you very much for inviting us, and God bless. Thank you very much, Dr. Mujimba, for especially for taking the questions. Um, I know that some of them came hot, and uh, but like you but said, he's in the hot seat. Yes, he's sat in the hot seat. Here. That chair is hot. We, we, we yes. didn't want to scare you. That, that that is usually the hottest seat. But but, but uh, he's getting food. He has children. Some children are put in uh, in the room to sleep on an empty stomach. Uh, while others are eating in the <laughs> sitting room. He has, he has five children. <laughs> Two are in a corner and eating bacon and uh, b b with the jam and bread and all that. Yes. While the other ones, the three, There's are nothing. on Muogo. They, they have to on eat. cassava <laughs> and, uh, and tea, tea without uh, sugar. sugar. <laughs> now, uh, someone called Isaac said, Charles, please read this one. Then he said, where is parliament in all this? Their role is appropriation. Now they have behaved like they didn't know anything and uh, they have left the whole saga to be a ministry of education saga. Yet they appropriate. I think uh, Isaac... <laughs> should, should I answer that? Isaac, Isaac... No, that question was actually said by Sarah. I asked you, why Sarah. did you approve? And I think Sarah, you interrupted. You know, <laughs> you interrupted. <laughs> Parliament did not know how much they appropriated to the, to the enhancement we, we, we do know they saw exchanges between <laughs> Baguma. That's what we shall assume until we, we discuss with MPs and come to a conclusion. Well, we are open to that. Thank we will you talk very much. Thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Mr. Baguma. Thank you very much, Moisa Mujimba. Doctor, thank you so much, Dr. Rubare. And uh, we want to appreciate you for finding time to come and share with us your, 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 your thoughts because this is a very sticking debate and uh, I'm happy that it is going on. As a nation, we should always encourage dialogue, especially at times when um, things seem not to be going right. Uh, that's how societies grow especially civilized societies. So um, I want to really appreciate you on behalf of Behind the Headlines and UBC. And thanks to the panelists, Honorable Mapenduzi and Council Sara, for always finding time to be here and discuss all these issues um, to add information and educate our people. To you out there, we really um, we are thankful that you keep watching and keep doing so again next week. And uh, I, I got so many messages. I didn't know that many people, many people would be interested in, in this topic. Now I know there are over 64 messages that I've got and we couldn't read all of them. But just know that we have taken your messages and we shall continue the discussion online and off the screen here. Until next week, God bless you all. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you.
sanyu senyo ne sanyu esanyu lijira kunzita e mucheni mmo terimba nalindi waka nyendo kulire simweze nenga nera bino bibyabulije 